Hi everyone, this is Linda. So let's create a banner using the applique letters in the MySonet Platinum. This can also be done in Premiere Plus Ultra and Premiere Plus 2 Ultra with some tweaking. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's learn about bringing in the applique letters into the digitizing module. Remember when doing appliques, there are usually three parts. First part stitches so you know where to lay your fabric, second tacks everything down, and the third is the satin stitch. We need to break these appliques apart so we can stitch all the placement stitches first for all the letters, then all the tack down stitches, then the satin stitches. We're going to learn about selecting similar, and we're going to change some global properties, and we're going to make some other adjustments. Again, this was filmed using my Sonet Platinum, but I have noted in the video different places that are done differently in the other softwares. These are some, some simple um, directions, but the directions I've also um, done in Project Creator, and I have a link to that. You must have a my Sonet account. You don't need to have my Sonet software to have this. The my Sonet account is free. Okay, so let's get started. So again, this was filmed using the MySonet Platinum software. Um, it can also be done using the My, I'm sorry, Premiere Plus and Ultra and Premiere Plus Two Ultra. You just have to make some little tweaks here and there. So we're going to do a blank canvas. You want the hoop to be set for 360 by 260 because that's the largest hoop we can do. And the first thing I want to show you is when you're doing a font, if you just did it straight from here, those applique fonts, it's going to so funny. So we're going to do Mary, and I'm just going to use, what I'm using is an applique font, the Rian patch 35 to 70. So I'm going to, going to hit apply, and there it is. So if I watch this sew out, what this is what happens. So I'm going to click on here, and we're going to watch it sew. It's going to do the placement line. It's going to stop and let you lay your fabric, and then it's going to let do a stitch tack down, and then it's going to do the satin stitch. Now, one of the things is it's now going to do the E, then the R, and then the y, R again, and then the Y. We want all of the stitches, the placement stitches, to be sewn at one time for all of the words, and then all of the tack down stitches, and then all of the satin stitches all at one time, rather than us doing individually. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just, I got that highlighted. I'm going to delete it. So in the My Sonet software, you would actually go to create and then digitizing. In the My Premiere Plus 2 and Premiere Plus Ultra, you're it's called Create, and it's down here at the very bottom, and it's a little flower-like um, icon, and that's where you want to go. So we're going to go into digitizing. It's going to take it a second to open up here. And there it's open. I'm going to start a new design with no picture. I'm going to do Next, 360 by 260 hoop. We're going to do Finish. And so what I want to do is we're going to insert our letters. So... Again, this is the same in all three versions of the software. So let's do insert lettering. And what I want to do is I'm going to move this over here to the right so we can see it. We're going to change the category to applique. We're going to use the Rion 35 to 70. And then we're going to do each of our letters. We're going to do Mary M, insert it. Oh, but I don't like the size, so let's get rid of that. So I'm going to just delete that guy, and I'm going to highlight, click on it and delete it. We're going to change it to the 75 millimeters, which is about um, 3 inches. So we're going to do insert, and there's my M, and then we're going to do E, insert, and R, and insert, and R, and uh, insert, and the Y, and insert. And I'm stopping here real quickly because I'm going to take my box select and I'm going to click, hold, and drag a box around those letters and I'm going to move them out of my way and up to the top. Then I'm going to continue on and I'm going to do each of my letters and you don't have to watch me do this, so I'm just going to pause my video. Okay, and because I need to spread things out, I've stopped at C-H-R-I-S-T, R-I-R-I-S, and I'm going to again box select, and I'm going to just drag that up here so then I have a nice clean spot and I'm going to do the rest of the letters. So now I'm going to 
close my insert lettering box. I'm just going to hit the X there. And now I can actually start moving these around a little bit. So I want to move my S over and I'm going to just move these so that I have a little bit more space between each letter so that I can actually get in there and cut this away. No, I, you could use your, um, your cutter machines and actually export the cutter file. I'm not going to do that for this. I'm just going to move these things around a little bit so that I have a little bit more space so that I can get my scissors in here. So by selecting each one, now make sure that you see how I grabbed that little circle there. I really didn't want to do that. I want to actually do this. I want to move the actual letters just a little bit. And you notice they also have orange boxes. That is because they are grouped and they are made up of multiple pieces. It's that tack, the placement line, the tack down line, and then the satin stitch. So we need to take these and break these apart. If you look, they're all over here and they're all grouped. Um, so we're going to change this. So see if I hit click on group and group, I'm going to just select the first one and then I'm going to do select all visible. Everything selected. I'm going to go to the edit tab and I'm going to do break apart. So now what's going to happen is all the running stitches, the stops, the applique pieces, all of the bits and pieces that make up that applique are now broken apart. But I now want to get all those running stitches running at the same time. So it'll be the M, the E, and, and forward. So we're going to do select similar, select similar from visible. And what it's going to do is it's going to highlight in my film strip all the way down. And this is the same in all the versions of the software. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave this near the M at the top, running stitch. And I'm going to take this first one. And I'm just going to click, hold, and drag that up. So he's, all the running stitches are on, now at the same time. So now I need to do the same thing. I need to click on the applique piece. I'm going to do select similar, select similar from visible. Again, it's going to highlight them all and I'm going to just drag that up so that it's right underneath each one. So again, double stitch, select similar. It's going to grab all, oops, select similar from visible. It's going to grab them all and I can slide that right up underneath the M. Satin line, I need to do the same thing. Select similar, select similar from visible, and again, slide that up there. So now what's going to happen is it's going to do all of the running stitches. If I played this out, you're going to see this. So cool. Do all of those, then it's going to lay down my fabric, and then do all of the satins at the same time. Sure does cut some process some of the process out but I'm going to go in and I'm going to insert a color change here I'm going to do a right mouse I'm going to do insert a color change and just make this a different color so things don't accidentally merge together do an okay now I'm going to come down here to this stop so that it will stop at this point and if I want to see what that says let's go to properties and it says, place your applique fabric now. You could actually change the wording for that. I'm going to do a right mouse. I'm going to insert a color change. And I'm just going to pick on another color. So now it's going to let me lay my applique fabric down. Now the last thing I want to do, OK, and it's going to do the double stitch, which is all the same color. We're going to come down here to the next step. We're going to do a right mouse. And we're going to insert a color change. And this time I want to use a red. So I now have three colors that are happening, but now I need to get rid of all of these extra pieces and parts that I don't need anymore. So I'm going to go and I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to hold my shift key, come to the very bottom and those all get highlighted and then I'm going to do my, I can go home and I can pick on delete and all of those are now gone. So now what will happen is when this sews out, if I watch this sew, again, we're going to do all of the placement stitches, then your applique fabric, it's going to do the tack down, then it will do the satin stitches. But 
Okay, so here I want to change my satin line properties. I'm going to do a right mouse. It doesn't matter which one of the satin lines I pick on. I'm going to do a right mouse. I'm going to pick on global properties. It will find everything that is actually a satin line, and I'm going to change this all at one time. I'm going to do global properties. It's right now set to a 2.0, and I want to make all my satin lines a 2.5. That is so that it's a little bit thicker. You could make it a 3.0. Because I'm doing a piece of batting in the middle of all this, it makes it a little bit heavier. So I'm going to do OK. So now no matter which one of these letters I pick on, if I want to see, um, I'm going to pick on another. Let's go down here and find a satin line. doesn't matter which one I pick on. If I just pick on property, it changed all of them to 2.5. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to change my fabric. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come up to where it says applique piece. I'm going to do a right mouse button. Again, global properties. And I want to change it to a Christmas fabric. So I'm going to do fabric. I'm going to pick on load previously saved fabric. And there's all kinds of choices in here. You can actually go to general, and there's some actual Christmas fabric in here. And I'm just going to pick on one that looks like this. I could pick on any of them, actually. Um, let's say I wanted to do this guy instead. Do OK. And do OK. Of course, he's not going to be as obvious because the print is fairly large. You could also put your own in here. So now the only other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that everything's in. Remember, I changed the width of my satin stitches. So let's make sure everything's in there. Everything's there. In the MySonet software, you could actually go and do file um, and do your save as and save your EDO file. I'm going to go back out of there. You could also do it from up here. If you do it here, it's going to export it as an embroidery design. But for those that have the other versions of the software, you can actually come here and you're going to do this little drop down and you're going to do copy embroidery and then you can paste it into your other part of your software. So that's the big differences. I can also send this to my Sonet. So the other thing I talked about in here was talking about my stitch out directions are actually um, written using Project Creator. I'm not going to save this. Um, and so that you know how to do that, I'm going to do it real quick. I'm just going to pick on my Sonet. I'm going to the internet, my Sonet. This is where you actually get to go in and set up your own personal account. So those that don't have Project Creator right now or don't have a MySonet account, you want to do that. And then what will happen is you can actually come here to Tools and Project Creator and you'll be able to see other projects that are being done. But the link in the comments will take you to the MySonet um, Project Creator to tell you how to stitch this out. Thanks for watching.